Kat said, coverage, darling. I've got it for you. You guys were crying about it in the last launch. I got the coverage for you today. And she gave it to us, period. Here it is. Like, we can't even cry about it. We can't say it's too much. No. This is the coverage we asked for, right? <laughs> she said, this is it. Take it or leave it. What's up, guys? Welcome back to my channel. My name is Nima. For those of you guys that are new, today I'm going to be filming the new Pat McGrath Labs concealer video. So a little bit in the middle of last year, Pat launched Foundations, which is the Skin Fetish Sublime Perfection Foundation. I did a review on this in partnership with Pat last year. This video is not sponsored, by the way, just letting you guys know. All my thoughts on the foundation and everything will be in that video. I used the shade Deep 36 in that video. So today I'm gonna be reviewing the new concealers that just launched, also along with the new Skin Fetish Sublime Perfection Blurring Under Eye Powder. If you have not done so already, make sure you are subscribed, join the family, and and let's go ahead and jump straight into this review. Hi. Nice and close. I'm using the new Biosan sunscreen. That's why I am a little purple in the face, but that'll go away soon. So I'm gonna use the Pat McGrath primer today. So this is one of my favorite primers next to the Milk Hydro Grip. This one just feels like I'm applying lotion and it feels nice. Mm. So we've got the Pat McGrath concealers pulled up right here. Retails for $32. This is the packaging right here. It is a creamy, lightweight, full coverage concealer with a natural radiant matte finish that brightens the under eyes and hides the appearances of blemishes. The coverage is full, which I think was the biggest concern that a lot of people had with the foundation. It definitely gave you model coverage, but I didn't mind it. I understood where people were coming from and like, oh, we want some more coverage. Like not all of us are built like runway models and I, I totally got that. It's Got a natural finish, so it has 36 shades, which is not bad. The range seems to be, from what I'm seeing online, pretty evenly distributed. My first impressions when I pulled it out of this packaging was I felt like something was off at first. I was like, something doesn't feel right about these concealers. It's because the tubes are glass. I was not expecting that. I'm used to like foundations sometimes coming in a glass tube. I don't see it that often and it just makes it feel even more bougie for me. I like it, I'm not mad at it. MAC Strobe Cream, this one right here. This is my second time using it. I kind of like it. I really like it on my forehead. That's where I like it the most. But it's just gonna give me a nice little glow underneath my foundation. Yes, I know. I already got the glow. My skin is already glowing. Oh, that's one thing I wanted to talk about. So my skin is just naturally reflective. Like, even if my skin is dry and I don't put anything on it, my skin is just naturally reflective for some reason, like a freaking mirror, which is crazy. You guys should see my legs. It, you literally can dance. No, you can't see yourself in my legs. That's what it feels like. My skin is very, very reflective in turn sometimes makes it look shiny in turn sometimes makes it look greasy and that's not the case so whenever I tell you guys like I lather it on it's not because I don't need it or whatnot it's just because my skin is dry I I have dry skin when I do put on moisturizer it instantly looks like I am overly moisturized or greasy so to speak and that's not the case this is so beautiful that just blends in and I don't really like a lot of liquid highlighters that go underneath your foundation or you put on underneath whatever don't ever blend out and disappear this beautifully I just put it on the high points and I didn't color correct underneath my mouth this time because this foundation is very not very like overly light coverage but it is a lighter coverage foundation I wasn't positive that it was gonna cover the color corrector that I normally use which is the live tinted hue stick so I'm gonna color correct on top see it's like very light coverage which is fine and this foundation does match my chest i'm pretty sure you guys saw at the beginning there was slight discoloration between my chest and my face that is something that i don't care to fix anymore i just don't care anymore um, so it is what it is. I prefer to match to my face and then balance out with concealer. But if I don't have that option, then I'll make it work. That's the pat. Just blend it out so easily. That's the shade 36, 35, 33, and then there is 32, and then 30. So there's no 31 either. There you go. I do think we could have definitely gone, we could have definitely used a 34. I'm not sure if it didn't get sent to me. They just probably sent me the ones that they thought would work best for my undertone, I'm assuming. Let's do 36. So I'm gonna color correct first with the NYX Born to Glue. And then now I'm gonna go in with the shade 36. The applicator is nice. 
Fenty Beauty Match Stick in Caviar. Should show up a lot better because this foundation is a little bit lighter. Ooh, cheekbone's about to be snatch snatched. Off camera, this is showing up like so much better. I remember when I first got these, I did like a swatch just to see what the shades look like. And I, the first thing I noticed was coverage. And I was just like, Pat was like, you guys were seriously complaining about all this coverage. She's like, I'm gonna give you guys coverage, okay? I am going to give you guys coverage, and she sure did. It is very, very, very full coverage. I don't feel like it's as neutral as I thought it was gonna be. But then I know for sure the other one the D35 being that red as well, saying specifically red undertones, I know that that would be too red, but I think it might just because I put too much on, but it is not my favorite undertone on me right now. But it looks so pretty underneath the eyes. Like, as far as like the formula, like, I feel like we're gonna have a banger formula, but I think I need to figure out either use less. So I'm just gonna try and diffuse the situation. I think I'm gonna use a different powder underneath my eyes to just help cancel out more of that red orangeness that I have underneath my eyes. Probably gonna use the Fenty Beauty powder. I'm gonna use the Fenty one because it has a more neutral, soft undertone. So I'm gonna use that today. It looks good on the forehead though. <laughs> not mad at the forehead. The formula looks so good. It's not matte and it's not drying, but it's also not overly like dewy and like feels like it's gonna slip around. It's really nice. So I'm gonna start with the Pure, cause that one just sets everything beautifully. The Pure is gonna be my light set, and then I'm gonna use the Fenty Coffee to kind of just really set everything in place. Oh, that actually helped a lot too. Just even the powder alone just already kind of neutralized some of that redness. Oh my God. Goodness. Okay, I'm not trying to hype this concealer up, but it usually takes a lot for me to go for, to get to this point. For it to look like that right now, it looks real good. The mix of this concealer and this powder, stop. Look at that under eye. So it came with this brush right here. It looks little too, but I hardly ever apply my concealer with a brush. If you're one of those people that applies your concealer with a brush, you might like this. So next we got the under eye powder. I've got the shade medium. This is the shade medium, and it's definitely gonna get washed out because it's very light. Um, I'm assuming it's to brighten underneath the eyes. It says it's blurring underneath the eyes. So that's that one. And then this one's deep light, which is Pretty much white. So let's see how much those are. Oh, those are $30 as well. The details, it's a brilliant, blendable, ultra weightless under eye setting powder that brightens and blurs for luminous, soft focus effects. Coverage is light, finish is natural. So that's the medium shade. And then that's the dark shade right there. So I'm gonna go in with the brush. Definitely fluffs off a lot, so be careful with that. I'm gonna tap off the excess on the paper towel and then Do you see a difference? Hmm, I don't know. Let's try the other side with medium, because that one was dark. I don't know. I don't really see the biggest difference with it, but I'm just gonna run it over the rest of my face anyways. It does have a very light coverage. If I feel fancy and I wanna throw a little sweep it underneath my eyes and whatnot, cool, but I didn't really see that big of a difference with this. So now I'm gonna go into my Ben Nye palette. A lot of you guys are asking me in my last video um, what palette this is. I actually went and picked out these specific shades. This little packaging is a Z palette and these are all eyeshadows. So I picked out specifically these eyeshadows. I will try and see if I can find them online and find the shadows online if you guys are really interested in them. I'm pretty sure most of you guys are just interested in these two right here. So I'll find those two for sure and I'll add the blushes if you guys want them as well. I'm gonna use this shade right here to set the contour that I laid down earlier. To set the rest of my face, I'm going into the Ben Nye Ebony palette. 
powder. This powder comes in this packaging, so just in case you guys were looking for it. The shades aren't consistent, so Ben and I like, figured that out because I saw a different ebony powder that did not look like this. Like it was very red, it had a completely different undertone, so I don't know what's going on with that. This one is the only one that I saw that had this like kind of neutral um, undertone. Um, but yeah, the only reason it's, it's in this is because it's easier to just use in this little dish. So I'm gonna go ahead and do my eyes off camera and do my brows, put them on on camera, and then I'll be right back and we'll go ahead and see what we're looking like. It is seven o'clock. What is that light? Y'all see that, right? Is it trying to detect my face? Cause I don't see it at all. Like I genuinely don't see it flashing. Like when I face it on. That is so strange. I don't know. Find out. Anybody got time for the government to be watching? This is what the makeup look is looking like. I did do my eyes and my lips and everything else off camera, but I did film it for IGTV. So if you guys are interested in the look and the eyes and everything, head over to Instagram. It'll be there probably before this video is up. So yeah. Alrighty guys, so it is now 2 p.m. 2 p.m. 2 a.m. 2 a.m. in the morning, 2.14 on a good Sunday morning for quarantine makeup. And I say that because like, I couldn't really go outside and do too much. I mean, what I did was I kind of chilled on the couch for a little bit, then I worked on my website. So I pretty much did in-home work for about seven, seven, eight hours. Is it eight hours yet? I think it's still like seven-ish, eight-ish, seven-ish hours. Um, so this is what it's looking like. It looks really good. I mean, as far as the under eyes, they look decent. I'm gonna get real close for you guys. They look decent. I didn't get any um, abnormal creasing. The powder, you guys already know, I wasn't like the biggest fan of the powder. I didn't really see that much of a difference. Um, I did put gloss on my lips just because the liquid lipstick was cracking on me. I think the only thing that I would say is I did notice that my under eyes were a little bit more drier than normal. Okay, so the under eyes, right? There is a little bit of creasing, but like I said, I always get creasing underneath my eyes. If you have lines, you're gonna get creasing, period. End of story, that's just how it is. Besides that, I genuinely feel like it held up fine everywhere else. For my smile lines, I usually like to use the Live Tinted Hue Stick. You guys see them, they're there. It's nothing abnormal to me. I'm used to this on my smile lines. The only thing that, like I said, limits it or minimizes it is the Live Tinted Hue Stick around my mouth area, but since I didn't use that today, so it is what it is, this is normal for me. So overall, I think this product performed pretty well. Number one, the coverage was there, so I do not need to be using nowhere near as much as I was using. All in all, I like the concealer. I think I'm gonna tweak it a little bit, mix it up with some of my other concealers, and figure out what my favorite shade is, considering how flawless it looked underneath my eyes I can definitely use this as a brightening portion of my concealer to kind of hide my dips so I'm definitely gonna be using this again I think that's all I have for today's video I hope you guys have enjoyed this quarantine wear test I've just been inside in the house chilling I had a glass of wine I'm feeling myself and I'm about to go take my ass to sleep because it is almost 3 in the morning that's pretty much it for our video I hope you guys have enjoyed if you have make sure you are subscribed Ooh, ow down below, hit the notification bell and get some of the notifications some of the time, you know how that works. Thank you guys so much for watching. Lots of love and I will see you guys next time. Last video, someone said take a shot every time Nima says skin, so.